always knew I wanted to, to, to draw. I mean, my game started off as like comic books and commercial illustration, that kind of stuff. But I used to watch a lot of Saturday morning cartoons. So I always really knew like that this was something I wanted to do. I just, there wasn't a lot of uh, cats that looked like me, you know, doing it. And there wasn't a lot of access and information to it. So I always kind of, you know, knew I'd be some kind of artist in some kind of vein, but you know, living out in Korea, you know, traveling, you know, producing shows, you know, that was that was pretty far from from my idea of what I thought I'd be doing, you know, you know, 20, 20 years ago. My name is LaShawn Thomas. I'm an illustrator and animator, currently living in uh, Seoul, South Korea. I've been here for a year and a half, uh, and uh, it's been a pretty uh, liberating experience, an eye-opening experience, and um, I'm learning a lot. We're headed to uh, uh, Sumbawi. It's, uh, it's, it's an area in Guangzhou, which is just right on the right on the ass of Seoul. <laughs> it's actually where the city and, and obviously the, the nature meets. This area is really green, and um, it's one of the three studios that I go back and forth to when I'm in Seoul. You know, um, and it's actually my favorite studio because it's, as you can see, it's all country. You know, when I moved here three years ago, I never imagined that I would be back here so much, you know. I, I moved here to kind of create a path for myself, to create a, to, 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 to have a different experience than, you know, what's normally expected and people who work in my field. So, you know, I thought it was this finite concept, you know. Um, I'd come out here, I'd do whatever, I'd get my experience and then I'd come back. But ever since I came out here, I've kind of put myself in a position that now I find myself here more. This area is, it feels like a small village, you know, so it's a nice change of pace from what I'm used to. Um, very quiet um, and very, very green. So yeah, so today we're gonna, we're out in Guatang um, at one of the studios near Sun Min. And uh, we're gonna check out some, uh, some character designs uh, for this project and go over some old drawings and stuff like that. This is Mr. Park, one of the best animators. Character designs are extremely important for obvious reasons. Character designs are important because they're the thing that the viewer sees the most on screen throughout the show, story, or uh, a film. Um, and it, it's the one thing that guides the viewers through the story. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, the style that we had going 
was kind of, uh, you know, classic, but at the same time, a little bit more contemporary in terms of, you know, what I designed for the actual comic strips. Comic strip. So we looked through a lot of my old character designs that I had developed before the graphic novel and the versions we did on the graphic novel and kind of combined those and streamlined them for, you know, to the animation. Um, and that was really what the task was, trying to maintain the essence of what it is we did um, in the graphic novel, uh, but at the same time give it a fresh new feel, you know, because this is the movie pictures for me. So after uh, Kim ki -Doo and I decided we were going to produce an animated version of this, this graphic novel I've been working on, um, the first task was, uh, you know, tackling the character design. I think Sam, the royal droid, who's our main character of the story, she went through a few drastic changes. In the graphic novel project, I drew her as a younger girl, about age 12. But once we got started developing a design for animation, Kim ki and I wanted to age her up a little bit more. So Kim ki passes on her shows her as having a bit more of a regal attitude about her, more demure, more slender. But like the comic book version of her personality, she's still an experienced demure, having no real exposure to the outside world until she's forced to learn of the outside world once her kingdom is attacked. Her journey represents the traditional Eurocentric fantasy aspect of the story. Philly the Kid, the loose cannon, who's another major character to the story, he's the wild card. He decides to help Sam on her journey. Because he's immortal, he has no real concept of fear or appreciation for life. This defines his personality. His design pretty much stayed the same from the look of the comic book. Um, I think he did got a little bit crazier with his hair in the final animation, if anything. Um, I gave some nods to some of the Japanese animated shows we liked with this character, but giving him an American gunslinger feel. He's such a fun character to draw and his power is really cool, and because he drives a coin-operated Cadillac. His journey represents the spaghetti western aspect of the story. Casey Turnbuckle, the uh, discarded uh, repair droid and uh, Sam's eventual best friend. She's another major character from the story. Uh, she's the uh, grease monkey with short-term memory loss. She can repair, fix, and make anything mechanical. She's kind of like a pint-sized MacGyver. She pretty much stayed the same as well in regards to her design from the graphic novel to the animated version, uh, especially since I did her model sheet myself. Her journey represents the more steampunk aspects of this project. Nine, uh, the masterless warrior with a terrible past. Uh, he's uh, the greatest swordsman never known. Uh, number nine of the legendary 47. He doesn't speak. The only talking he does is with his sword. He changed quite a bit from my original design. Um, because when I originally designed him, uh, he was you know, to be an offbeat, drunk samurai. Um, which made his face look really old. He kind of looked like Naoto Kun's grandfather from Fully Cooly in the Face. And um, I, as you know, the years went by, I decided to change him. Um, so we eventually changed him a little to make him a bit more appealing. Uh, gave him some long hair, but he still has a bald spot. Um, he represents the more uh, Edo period Japan aspects of the story. Lock, one of the story's main antagonists. Uh, he's the only being in the world who can use magic in a time when magic is extinct. And this makes him terrifying and unstoppable. Uh, he's a major anchor to the other characters' motivations. We went through a lot of designs for him. Originally, I designed him to be more of an angry Muppet <laughs> with a bad air day. But he developed over time, as he's now more of a beefed up goblin of sorts. Uh, his physique, this is all a manifestation of uh, his image due to the ability of his magic gauntlet that he wears. His original form was a bit more meek. Um, he represents more of the classic Eurocentric aspects of traditional fantasy as well. Dex, short for ambidextrous, one of Locke's main uh, protectors and guardians. Uh, she's a major antagonist in the story as well. She's a former pleasure droid turned assassin. Uh, she has magnetic field bars for arms and controls her hands by remote control with the deadly, like, retractable claws. She was always deadly in design and very, very sexy. Um, she pretty much stayed the same in concept from the original story as well. The father. Um, 
short for uh, cannon fodder. These guys are Lox's disposable army. Um, there's literally millions of these guys. Um, and this is how he, you know, maintains power. Um, I always thought it was cool to design a creature who's like a giant on all fours with just simply a gun for a head. So that's basically what these guys are with uh, little midgets manning them, you know, loading their heads to fire guns. Uh, they all, they run on all fours as well sometimes. Uh, their designs stay the same from the comic book concept. Uh, they're pretty steampunk uh, in, in approach as well. And as for the entire crew altogether, the main characters, um, they spend a considerable amount of time together throughout the story. Um, so I, I thought putting all of these characters together with different backgrounds and, and different personalities and stories made for a pretty epic saga with like a hip, kind of hip hop aspect to it. They all turn out to be pretty fun looking motley crew of wandering adventurers uh, who all happen to be in the Cadillac. <laughs>